Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is Spawn AI from class. Let's run through our quick little example here. You're actually going to see an AI spawn from across the way, and then he's going to run to me, and then he's going to go ahead and stop. And then he'll follow every few seconds and try to find me again. Nothing really special about this. However, what I'm having to do is in the play for my character is spawn in his default controller, get the AI controller, and then go ahead and set up a blackboard for my AI to use. And in order to create the character, I'm using create actor right here, spawn actor from class, and I'm setting it up to spawn my generic AI character. Now the video is about spawn AI from class, so let's cover that. Spawn AI from class is a node that was created to facilitate spawning AIs. It's meant to automatically spawn the controller for the AI itself and set up any behavior trees you want, rather than having to set up all the other complicated script inside of the AI itself. So let's remove the script from our AI. And in our spawner class, let's hook up our spawn AI from class node. We're going to go ahead and set up my generic AI character. And I can actually just go ahead and hit play. And you'll notice the character spawns and comes right at me. Now to make it more realistic, I need to get actor location and make it so it actually spawns at my spawning sphere sphere and there we go and you can see it comes after us and it looks identical to before no difference the difference being behind the scenes where we've actually used one node the spawn ai from class node so let's look at the settings by default it's going to come set up and nothing's going to happen and if you compile it well it's not going to give you an error it's just going to generically spawn nothing we need to set up at least one thing, the pawn class. This will be the pawn you want to spawn, usually having an AI character as the parent. If I was to pull this up, we're going to find this is a character, and inside of our character, we have a AI controller class set up. So that way, when it spawns in as an AI, it's going to automatically assume, and it's going to spawn an AI controller and set it up based on this setting. The next one is our behavior tree. This is optional. As you saw, I didn't use it. But if you have a behavior tree, you'd like them to use automatically. Rather than creating one and assigning it during the spawning of the character, we can go ahead and set it up here. We just go ahead and select one of our behavior tree assets, and it would go ahead and run that on the start. Now the other options are pretty simple. The location to spawn it at. Since I have a spawner, I'm simply spawning it where my spawner is. The rotation, if you want to adjust the rotation, and then a no collision fail check. This is pretty simple. If my spawner was, let's say, where's my spawner right here? Let's put it down here and hit play. You'll notice, well, we have an issue. My spawn is going to have a problem because it's inside of a collision. If we do no collision fail and we move it up enough, let's go to something like that. Our spawn is going to have no issues because it's going to spawn and ignore collision. So basically, when you spawn, if there's something colliding, such as you're inside of a box, let's say, and that box would prevent collision, would prevent spawning normally due to collision, if you check this, it's going to basically ignore it when you spawn it. And that's pretty much going to wrap up the node. We have a return value, which is like anything else we create. It's going to be a reference to the pawn that we created. And we use this node to spawn our AI whenever you want an AI to spawn automatically possess its AI controller, and then use an optional behavior tree.